Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, this this one might be a little little ranty, a little ranty. Just, you might want to turn your volume down. Yeah, get you're... some popcorn. Uh, have so thoughts. <laughs> we're gonna talk about this article on the Mary Sue. What are we gonna do when the Mary Sue shuts down? I don't know what we're gonna. Do. Uh, we're gonna I'll talk... laugh initially. <laughs> initially. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's how how responses to the Marvel Cinematic Universe reveal unexamined critical bias. Right. By that, it means if you don't like it, if you don't like what they like, it's because you have a, a bias. So Geeky's got thoughts. I'm <laughs> going to listen. I might chime in a little bit. But uh, this is about uh, the Marvels and just in general. Just like, Marvel, Marvel in general. People, Marvel people, in general. Bad, horrible people, which they spell out who bad, horrible people are. But remember, it's not good to have biases. And he guesses who the yeah. bad, horrible people uh -huh. are, guys. Okay, you ready? Yeah, but, but, but wait, but wait, oh, bef oh. before we get into it. Any well, I'm further, still in a good mood. Yeah, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You get a woohoo if you do. Uh, check out our audio versions, our podcasts on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can take us with you. And uh, yeah, you can listen to us in the car. You turn the volume down in the car if you have a really good setup. Oh, if I start yelling? Yeah. Well, this article from the Mary Sue, because they're never biased in any way, shape, or form, is going to tell you about your unexamined critical biases. Okay. And why it's wrong coming from the Mary Sue who are known for their, it's even part of their, their, their tag and everything else about their biases. So um, they start right off with plenty of them and then tell you you're wrong to have any. Um, so this is this article from Rebecca Oliver Kaplan. We've all heard it at least a million times. Marvel Studios has lost its way. Yep. But just this week alone, fans got new announcements for the Fantastic Four and Deadpool Wolverine. Well, Deadpool we've known is coming. They just, they just announced the name. Fantastic Four we've known is coming. They just announced the cast. These weren't like new things. No. I mean... They're Fox things. Fantastic Four people were actually happy that they didn't race swap and gender swap everyone. So there's that. I, I just want to step in here real quick. I remember about five or six years ago that uh, a little birdie was telling us that Disney would do whatever they had to do to get the Fantastic Four and the X-Men back. Mm -hmm. And that included buying Fox to get them back. And people said we were smoking meth, that it wasn't going to happen. It was you, and they said that. You were just an idiot. An idiot blogger. A uh, 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 travel blogger. Yeah, what I know. Do you know? About? Anyway, here we are. Okay. Here we are. Neener, so neener. these projects lead me to believe that maybe Marvel isn't failing. No, no. No, Marvel's failing. Disney, I mean, Iger's basically saying they're going to do fewer movies and have smaller budgets because it's failing overall. Sorry. Yes. That's, yes. Just, that's just common sense. That's just numbers. That's just math. Okay. It's catering to a wider audience. Well, it should if it wants to make money. I, I would argue that it's not catering to a wider audience. As of late, it's been narrowing the audience, which is the problem. Now here, and the largely white cis male critical base cannot relate. Remember like a week or two ago when people were saying that they were excited about Deadpool, but they weren't excited, they didn't like She-Hulk, and the internet lost their shit because you're not because they like they want a Deadpool Wolverine, but they didn't mm. like She-Hulk and they're basically the same thing. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do remember that. And they that, got yeah. told it's because they were a cis male and they're critical and they're a bunch of, of, of poopy pants baby faces. <laughs> but the the new the just this week, the new announcements of Fantastic Four and Deadpool have many excited for the wider audience reach. But again, it's largely, and this is what they said, cis male critical base. Keep that in mind. Um, sometimes partially towards certain social categories isn't explicit, it's implicit. Well, that means it's not a conscious discriminatory behavior. It still causes harm. In criticism circles, there doesn't seem to be an understanding of how a viewer's implicit biases impact a film. It's not hard. Do you like the film or not? You yeah, know, basically yeah. they're saying that your implicit bias is ruining films. No, I would argue if the films weren't fucking terrible, people wouldn't be implicitly biased against them. They wouldn't be rolling their eyes every time they're like, oh, for a modern audience, because they know we're fucked, because it's going to suck. So I, I think I can bring X-Men into the conversation right here. The reason everybody so apprehensive about X-Men 97, that was, that was one project I was super excited for, but immediately... We've got, oh, we need to update the X-Men. Oh, the X-Men, you know, they're more progressive. They're more woke. Oh, Morph might use they, them pronoun. Well, so people keep, are already like, ah, shit, Yeah, but they keep go. arguing, well, you're all a bunch of bigots because it's always progressive. No one ever said it wasn't. No. That's what gets me. And, and actually, Lorena Creole had posted something and on Twitter, and it was completely correct. 
Yeah, I found it. It's right here. Um, they're basically going on about how they're bi it's anti bigotry and you're all you're all bigots. They keep doing this every time. And here's what uh, what Lorena Creole said: The X Men were always diverse. True. Changing a character to suit your agenda is straight lazy and disingenuous. That is what people take issue with because they're they're mutually they're, they're you can say this sucks because you're changing characters for no damn good reason, and that doesn't make you a bigot. Yeah. And then they're like, make your own non-binary character in the X-Men universe, do the work, not indoctrination. I would argue like, yeah, when you're doing this and you're just taking a character, repurposing it, then all you're doing is like, you're not, I, the people I'm representing aren't even worth having their own character. Whatever throwaway shitty character we don't like, that you can have that one. Yeah, kind of. I mean, that's that's what gets me about the whole Morph thing. Like, I don't, I don't literally, I, I don't give a shit about Morph. The thing is. Nobody gives a shit about Morph because Morph was barely in the original series and was made up just for the cartoon. And then we're getting all these people all of a sudden they're coming out of the woodwork because, you know, Wikipedia. And they're like, no, actually, they based these other characters on Morph and Morph was based on the changeling. And it's like you didn't know that shit until this week. You never watch the original yeah. show. Morph was literally created to die. But the, the thing is, is when you start leading with this and there's this whole conversation about the politics before the thing comes out, people are less inclined to watch mm -hmm. the thing, whether it's the movie or the TV show or the game. We saw it with the Dungeons and Dragons movie. I held off on watching that thing for months because I thought, oh, my God, all I heard about was we're emasculating men and we're going to make men look stupid and tee hee hee. And they didn't. It no. was actually pretty good. You're anti. You're not. It's anti help, as you said. You're not helping yourself, yes. and you're leading with this. You're better just to put out a good product and movie. Say, hey, here's here's the yeah. new X Men movie, and then just keep your mouth shut about everything else. But no, 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 we can never do that. Um, so they said, according to the American Psychological Association, implicit bias is a negative attitude of which one is not consciously aware against a specific social group. You mean like when you say at the beginning, uh. It's the largely white cis male critical base. <laughs> you mean like that one? That that shows a little implicit bias, doesn't I mean, it? I it's think that you would. Men. I would it's think you would have uh, have a bias. Um, they said it, it's shaped by previous experience and learned associations. So basically, saying because people are always mad and get their back up whenever you say modern audiences, you're tanking films. Yes. No, it's called. Well, yeah, but I'm saying if Hollywood would stop doing that, yes. people wouldn't get their backs up and would go watch the damn movie. If the Mary Sue would stop doing it, people wouldn't like automatically tune out. If the Mary Sue says it's good, most people would say, "Oh, it's gonna suck." They thought Madam Webb was fantastic. Um, so here's the thing. Yeah, because people, I, I look at that and I'm like, if you're you're leading with the politics or leading with, oh, it's an all-female cast or whatever, that tells me that you don't believe in your movie enough to let it succeed or fail on its own merits. Because mm -hmm. if you had a good movie and you were sure this movie was going to do well, you'd shut your fucking mouth up, put the movie out there, let people decide. What's even more insulting is like we've mentioned this many times for years they had movies that were like led you know diversity led films and all that other shit no one thought anything of it because it was just a good movie and that was, was people just expected it they never thought twice about it because it wasn't made a big deal like now you're like making it be like it's like at a point thing like finally we're doing this it's like bitch please you were doing it for years and everybody went to those movies because they were good movies that happened to have diverse casting it wasn't yep. all about diversity and then the shitty movie all right, I'm sorry. Maybe part of the responsibility, instead of blaming it on the audience, is with the studios who keep writing piss poor characters and, and just repurposing everything in a shitty way. You and your friends, you know, getting themselves to getting writing gigs, writing shitty things, okay? That might be part of it. Since many struggle with the first step of combating implicit bias, which is admitting to your own bias, prejudicial beliefs, here's a Harvard University's implicit test. You mean, again, the largely white cis male critical base who can't relate. You mean like that fucking bias? What's your name again, Rebecca? Okay, Becky. Oh my, it's a Becky. Oh my God. It's Becky's rights itself. You can't make this up. Um, God, it hurts. This project tests implicit bias by selecting images from Bayette Ross's photo collection of our kind people to measure the strength of associations between conception and evaluation. So, wait. so stereotypes, you mean like the stereotypes we saw with, the, you know, Shira and, you know, and, and the whole thing where uh, Frosta had to be an Eskimo or with uh, G.I. Joe, where we had Snake Eyes and it had to be an Asian guy. And you guys probably thought that was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, well, Snake Eyes did real well. But I'm just saying, it's like this, they stereotype <laughs> the hell out of everything all the yeah. time. Hollywood keeps stereotyping yes. people so yes. hard. It's ridiculous. But, you know, stereotypes are bad unless we do it.
God, you can't. They go on about that. The film industry is valued between 42.5 billion and 100. That's a wide range. 42.5 billion and 145.7 billion. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. It's worth somewhere between one and 145.7 billion. <laughs> that's a lot. That's what a, the yeah. hell? Yeah. And more than a third of filmgoers actively seek out reviews and admit to choosing movies based on positive reviews. Well, if you're spending your money, you're going to. You look at commercials and trailers, you, they, they do it. How is that different than them putting out a trailer to try to win you over with a trailer? And then they either show you all the good stuff in the trailer or they lie to you in the trailer to get your mm -hmm. butts to the seats. If the movie sucks, it's going to suck. People aren't going to go. I'm sorry. That is true. Uh, I mean, that's it. And it's like they're they're like trying to case build all this shit ahead of time to make excuses for when the movie fails. And the movie failed at the end of the day because it wasn't a good movie. <laughs> Here we go more. That they're, The racial bias is movies that in 2003 to 2007, they had 384 white leads and all white supporting casts. And they focused on 68 film critics employed by 11 newspapers finding out ratings for movies with a black actor and all white supporting casts are 6% lower. In 20, 2003 and 2007. So 20 years ago. And I guarantee you that wasn't right even a few years before that. Because you'll find most of the big movies were, were not white led. Yeah, you know, I remember Beverly Hills Cop was kind of a thing. Oh, 80s, 90s, tons of, I mean, 70s, tons oh. of films and shows that were not white led, and they were huge. But then 2023 to 2027, anything 20 with years it, ago, anything with Eddie Murphy 30 or 40 years ago was huge. Now they're trying to say prejudice against movies with black leads. Why the, why the frick? And he goes on and on about this. And, 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 and they're talking about the psychology. Whatever. Well, you just go on and on. And it's like, because you're prejudiced and you're biased. You mean the person who's like cis white people or suck? I just, I can't, you can't even make this shit up. I love how they're bringing back discrimination and racism. Like it's like we, you know, I, people for the most part uh, moved beyond this. And we didn't really see color or gender in movies. We're just like, hey, is the movie good? Is the movie good or is the movie preaching? There's a difference. Like you can have diverse people in the movie and it's not a preachy movie. It's just a good movie. But what they do is they always take it that extra step. It's always like, okay, well, because we have diverse people in this movie, now we got to preach to the audience that we hate, the cis, white, well, hetero, male better. audience. Okay. So now we have talking about as King T'Challa was a black superhero representing a black nation, critics are ready and elated for the character on screen debut. Yeah, a, very, a lot of people like Black Panther. Praising the film for being legit that good. Compare this to the negative critical response, and we're talking critics, not even audiences, to Disney's plus Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Because the Captain America and Winter Soldier wasn't that good. I'm no. sorry. I saw both. Black Panther was arguably much, much, much better than Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Okay, yeah, this is this is this is like this is not like literally mismaking. Okay, this the thing that gets me about this though too is this does a huge disservice because this basically says, well, you're not allowed to be critical of bad movies starring diverse people because they have to be coddled. You can't well, no, you can't man. let you can't let them succeed or fail on their own merit. I, you know, Black Panther made a billion dollars at the box well, office. Well, they're like, yeah, like, there's two ones, and you liked one but not the other. Well, because one was good and one wasn't. I I'm love sorry. The Black Panther. I thought the Black Panther was a good movie. It had like one white dude in it. I didn't give a shit. I thought it was good. Now, also, to be fair, The Lion King is my favorite Disney movie of all time, and it basically was The Lion King. But, you know, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I thought it was but good. But I'm just like, I thought they said, well, because critics were mad about the preachy and political politics that are too on the nose. But they were. I'm sorry. They were. I saw it. You're full of shit. Just so, so you have to love everything that has black lead in it because you know otherwise you're you're a, you're a bias. This is bullshit. This is basically telling everybody you have to love everything I like or yours. Basically, they always do. You're an idiot. You're a bigot. You have to love it because it's black lead. Just because it's black lead doesn't mean it's good. Just because it's white lead doesn't mean it's no, good. No, there's plenty of shit. So let's let's just take all the white lead movies. Well, Madam Web is a fantastic example. Of course, they're going to say it's because it's women because Mary Sue loved Madam Web. But Madam Web has a 13 percent on Rotten Tomatoes and is a white woman in the lead. And it was dog shit. So they're like talking about how the declarative statements from a Forbes writer impact the general opinion for people saying, like the one guy said, it's not my, he'll never be my Captain America. How very dare you? Actually, you know what? A shit ton of people said it. Sorry. Well, he's a replay. So this, this again, this is another, this is another case of where you do a huge disservice to 
these mantle characters. When you bring another character in and you say, you know, we're going to have this character replace this other white male character, people are immediately going to have their backs up. Um, I think Falcon is a great character. I think he's, if anybody should, should be the next Captain America, probably. Yeah. Historically, I'd say Falcon. He was, Fal he was a uh, Captain America in the comics for a while. Right. That being said, general audiences, they want Captain America to be Captain America. You know? Yeah. And I think it's uh, more I mean, to deal with, yeah. People who don't read the comics, just not wanting a lot of change. Right. But then they're like, you know, they're saying the difference in the critical response between these two characters could be due to who they are supposed to represent, not the programming quality itself. No, no. It's due to the programming quality itself because it sucked. I'm sorry. It was not as good. I got bored. I gave it a chance. Actually, so far of all the Disney Plus shows, the only two I've finished, and one of them was reluctantly, uh, I finished Hawkeye and I finished uh, WandaVision. And WandaVision, I, I, you know, a lot of people took a crap on that one. I thought it was actually pretty okay. Hawkeye was pretty okay. I couldn't finish captain america i got it wasn't because he became captain america i got bored i got bored oh it gets better you ready for this uh, one okay. remember we ha can't have biases guys can't okay. have the biases right but, four yeah. years after the insurrection side question why are we even trusting your views about from oh legacy papers when you run op eds around january 6th insurrection i don't know becky Please explain to me about the wait, months wait, of riot wait, 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 and wait, all wait. that and how that was okay, wait. but an insurrection isn't. Why? Okay. But you can't have biases, okay. remember? Okay, okay. Let's back this up because I'm getting all kinds of mixed messages oh, here. Now it's talking about Trump's America. Oh my God. What year is this? 2017? Okay. So these digital media outlets are complaining that journalism is dying and uh, now they're complaining about the legacy media. I'm like, well, the legacy media, the New York Times and the Forbes and that shit, that, that's going to be around after the Mary Sue gets shut down by gamers group. True. And, they're, and they, why are they doing, why are they bringing up Trump and that into it now? Because the election's this year and they're trying to get cash in on the election name dropping bullshit. So if I think, if I think the uh, Falcon, the Winter Soldier was a boring ass show that has what to do with Trump? What the fuck? What again? What year is oh, this? This is the shit that we saw. People can't see black people in leaderships that they think should, white people should be in, according to Becky. And I'm there like, are some very powerful, very influential black folks that have more money than I will ever see ever. And uh, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, like that's not that's not like it's freaking. God, go back to the 80s, 90s. Some of the biggest stars out there were black folks and they made a shit ton of money and their movies made a shit ton of money. Everything they were in made a shit ton of money and nobody cared. But they're like, again, they're making it about Trump's America can't fathom another Obama. So if you if you voted for Trump, it's because you're racist. Guess what? Becky's going to shit herself when she finds out a lot of people who weren't white voted for Trump. Anyway, um, they can't see it. They don't want to see another black man in power again, except Biden's and is, is the president. And Democrats didn't they, put another black man up. They put Biden up. So if you want to be pissed at somebody, you pissed at your own party. But again, bias people, is wrong, guys. They've tanked people like Yang. Um, you know, I, I would have voted for you. I mean, not to get all political, but I'm just saying, like, they've actually tanked diverse people, women and people of color who just happen to be conservative-ish. They've tanked them to push doddering old joe biden right white the white guy, guy you know who, who, who like, gave a eulogy at a kkk members funeral oh my once. god but you know hot damn they, yeah. they, they just can't fathom another black man in power except no they're not running anybody that that, that that's not white sorry I, um but why yeah, are we right? talking about trump and obama when they're talking about ex in, implicit because biases that is on the top of their mind all the time these because people they, but they're show, your bias is showing stop. becky pull up your pants she belongs in a time machine. She needs to go back sagging. to 2017 when this kind of shit was invoked. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what your politics are. If the conversation is, do people have an implicit bias when they see uh, a black person or a woman or a gay person and a liberal, whatever. I think, look, I'm going to be honest. Do I think sometimes people roll their eyes? Yeah. Why do they roll their eyes now though? I think it's more because of these kinds of articles and the media being like, you have to like right. it because I would there's argue, a woman. I would argue a, you if know. there's more divi divisiveness and division now than there was, because when we were kids, it was like completely no, no one finding out. Nobody gave a If shit. it's like that now, it's because it's a problem you created. People like Becky. Yes. And, and, and the, the studios and everything else made a problem 
Um, they revived a problem from years ago and they're trying to blame it on everybody else and say it's their fault for hating it. Well, they're just being lazy and writing shitty diverse characters and just repurposing everything they have, gender and race swapping everything, and then trying to hide behind that you're a bigot and it's okay if they do things like that because you're just you're just some kind of istophobic asshole when in reality they are themselves the istophobic assholes and they are the ones making things suck i i would say that they are actually doing a massive disservice to uh, uh minority led films I anyway cuz i I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about um the Han mansion which i freaking loved i thought was a great movie uh the original Han mansion had a predominantly Black, well, I had Black Family, I had Eddie Murphy in mm -hmm. it. And it made, I think it made money. I think it did okay. I don't think it was like gangbusters, but it had Eddie Murphy when before Eddie Murphy wasn't that hot anymore, whatever. Um, and nobody really said, thought anything of it. Now, because the media is out there like, well, look, it's a Black Family and the bigots be mad. And then the same thing happened with Blue Beetle. You know, Blue Beetle, oh, it's, it's coming from a Le, Le Tinkerbell point of view, and the bigots be mad, and they're going to be mad. Oh, look at that that uh, Batman joke in there. Tee, well, the bigots are mad. They, yeah, and they didn't go because they're like, you're going to scream at me that I'm an awful well, person. Well, that's just it. They, 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 it. When it started out, they tried to use that, and it would actually threaten people. They'd be like, oh, yes. I don't want people to think I'm a terrible person, so I'm going to go. And now when they hear that, they're just like, I'm not going. No. Fuck you. you Because they're just like, they're they're past it. They're over it. Now they're just like, they're not going to go just to spite you. Exactly. Because they're sick and tired of shit. Even if something's good that's not fair of the movie, because people around the movie, like the case of the D&D &D movie or the Haunted Mansion, make fucking stupid comments. Yes. Because that was that was the, the thing about the, the Haunted Mansion movie. And I remember I actually kind of got into fights with people over it. Because I'm like, the movie is actually good. It's not woke. It's not. They're, actually, race never came up in the movie at all. It was just a movie about the Haunted Mansion. Imagine that, you know? And uh, and same with, uh, you know, Blue Beetle. Yeah, it dealt with a uh, Latino family. And yeah, there were a couple of throwaway lines here and there about politics. But again, the people associated with it and the media did a huge disservice because they basically told people this thing is going to be quote unquote woke when it really wasn't. And they misrepresented a joke thinking they were going to stick it to the bigots, whoever edited that trailer. And they probably cost them twenty five million dollars opening weekend because nobody gave it a chance. Nobody gave the Han Mansion a chance because the conversation around it was like, well, finally, we have a, a Haunted Mansion movie with a black lead. And I'm like, well, we had that before, didn't we? It doesn't matter what side you're on either. As soon oh. as you hear this, you're just immediately like, I, I'm out. Like, I don't want to even because you want to go to the movies to be entertained. Yeah. You want something new. You want to be, you know, have fun. And immediately you're going to be like, I'm not going to have fun because it's going to be preachy to preach, preach, preach. And unless you're extremist, you don't fucking want that. And then they're going on, again, keeping it on here about this. And then they're talking about, however, about why genre entertainment should be preachy and about on those topics where what issues like racism and abortion. Because no one wants to go fucking see a movie about abortion. God, what the fuck is wrong with you, Becky? But, you know, don't have any biases, right, Becky? This whole article is just your giant bias. With that whole idea that you're somehow better than everybody else because you took the quiz. Wait, okay, now we're getting into a totally different, a totally different thing. Now we're talking about how A.O. Scott said in 2021, the health of movies is connected to the health of journalism and the mass extinction of the local newspapers and weeklies that nurse local film scenes across the country. What the fuck does that have to do with bias? No, basically, you're freaking the fuck out because the Mary Sue's probably going to get shut down because it's not making money. It gets, okay, well, the... The AI wait, 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 wait. However, as a web-based entertainment writer, I want to add the problem is more than the mass extinction of print media. It's about capitalism's role in journalism. Because you know they fucking want to make money so you get your ass paid, Becky. Um, as the threat of AI makes content farms and legacy media alike change how they approach reporting, traditional avenues to promote film and television are dying. Or you could just put good films out and people will go. But what does this have to do oh, wait. And as we stare into the face of looming fascism. And the Winter Soldier. And, and we're staring into the face of looming fascism. It's happening at a time when diversity of voices is needed most. Becky's just pissed because Becky's going to be out of work. And she's a socialist who thinks that she should just get paid to write shit because she wants to. And that the company at wanting to make money so they can pay her is fascism. There are plenty of oh, YouTube. Oh, God, she doesn't shut the fuck up. Commenters. There's so many YouTube commenters out there that are not cis white men. They're making millions of dollars. They're doing just fine, but they shit on them. They shit on uh, Tyrone Magnus. He's a guy who he does, uh, you know, YouTube critique and stuff, and they shit on him all the time. It's it a doesn't black matter. Dude. It doesn't matter because it's not about that. It's, I, I brought this up how many times. Oh. It's like they say that they're representing you. 
And but when reality is, they represent they represent what they want to think you would believe. And if you disagree with them, they tell you you're internalized, whatever, and then don't listen to you anyway and marginalize you twice. And then Becky here is going on about how critics researchers found that men comprise 66 percent of the of the top critics and women 34 percent with non-binary critics only accounting for 0.4 percent because that's probably how many non-binary people make up the percentage of non-binary people the public at large there are not a lot of people in the real world who identify as non-binary and a lot of the people who do are online so i think it seems like there are more of them than there actually are but we saw like with reviews for like madam webb and not liking it there was a lot of them were women a lot of them were women right? a lot of the women were harsher critics because i think the men are afraid to let loose what they really think about these movies because if you're a dude especially if you're a white dude you're gonna get shit on if you don't like this movie for legitimate reasons then 72 percent of staff positions are held by men was only 27 percent held by women and 1% non-binary individuals. Who cares? That just says what to me, that does this have to do with nothing. the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Just, just Becky's using it to, to work through her issues, apparently. 72% of men. Why is your automatic assumption that it's not women, that women wanted the jobs and weren't giving it, given the jobs? Maybe the women just didn't want to be full-time staff positions. Maybe they had other things they're doing. Maybe they like to have be freelance. Maybe they have kids. Maybe they're smarter. I was gonna say maybe they're smarter and know to get and out of like it. They're like doctors or something, and they're staying the fuck away from journalism that. because I I did that for you. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who think that uh, we just like popped out of the ground one day and decided we're gonna start ranting about shit on YouTube, that's not how it happened. Actually worked at newspapers, have run blogs for about fifteen years now. We've done the journalism thing. It's hard. It's a grind. And God bless those women if they're smart enough to stay away from it. <laughs> oh, again, Becky gets better. She gets better, guys. Okay. okay. Mo men write most reviews across film genres, right? Which does 75%. Doesn't reflect the demogra demographics of the MCU audience. Like fucking hell it doesn't. We just did a, a video right before it saying that men make up 65 to 70% of superhero audiences, okay? Consider that men over 25 men up 45% of the audience for the Marvels. The fuck is And the rest of the scenes being filled by women over 25 or 22%. And, and Madam Webb, it was 40, 47% women and 53% yeah, men. And mostly so dudes fucking what? what? Men under 20, 25 or 20% and women under 25 or 14%. Well, that's still, you know, women was, what's that make it like? Uh, 36% and, and then men with 50%. 50 but, me, but the audience is mostly male. It wasn't 75% male. Oh my what God. the fuck, Becky? They said, insiders are saying it's like 65 to 70%. It's, it's, on average, is the male audience. I'm sorry you don't like it, Becky, but men are predominantly the superhero audience. Yes. Okay? It's but, just the way it is. Your I'm bias sorry. is showing again, Becky. You've got you've got dudes with bulging biceps and pecs and spandex running around beating the shit out of other dudes. I mean, it's just... it's a Again, Becky's whole article premise was that you have to... Your biases are wrong and you need to, to recognize and, 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 and do what you need to do to correct it. Getting to greater equality starts with teaching men, ideally from a very young age, the whole world doesn't belong to them. I've never gotten that feeling. It ever. has to be okay and courage, really, for men to empathize and align with women and stick up for them. A lot of men well, do, okay. Becky. Let's Becky back this up. Fucking check her privilege. S stick up for them. Okay, so I'm getting, as a man, I get mixed messages because I am simultaneously told that I have to. Look out for women, but don't be a misogynist and you need to realize women can take care of themselves. So which is it? Because I am really confused. It's very, it's a very confusing time to be a man. Because but, women, we're, but men are, aren't supposed to like, they're supposed to let women you know, be the, the biggest audience in superhero movies when they have no way of knowing that. Yeah. But then if they don't go, they'll be in trouble for not going to see the movie because they're misogynist. They're quietly not going. They're just like, they're withholding their dollars. And or, we're or seeing, maybe Becky should understand she's got a bias and she should shove it up her ass. But what's word slut? I've been giggling this whole time about word slut. I don't really fucking they're care. They're talking about sticking it up their... I don't know. Who knows? It's not, but she went and found stuff to, 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 to be for confirmation bias. And as she's going on about how bias is bad. I think Becky's very angry. Uh, Becky's very biased. <laughs> um, I talk about the, the YouTube shout men. Like I can, I can actually hear her screaming in my head. No, that's these me. things. But it's mostly screaming it's like, about Becky. Becky is 
is Becky. Yes. Yeah. Remember, universe, unexamined critical biases are wrong, guys. You is... to, first step is to recognizing your bias. Which one, Becky? So far in this article, you hate uh, cis. What was it again? Let me make sure I get the right wording. Cis. White cis male critical base. You hate okay. Trump and anybody who agrees with Trump because you think they hate black people, including the black people who voted for Trump. You hate anybody who's against abortion. You hate anybody who's a male and a staff writer because they don't they take jobs away from women. You hate male critics because they aren't they, their voices are heard more than women. You hate that men are more the audience for superhero movies, and you hate that men aren't giving you whatever you think you should be gotten because they're men. They should learn to like learn their place and that it's underneath you. Right. Cause they're saying, they're saying that like men think that they're entitled to stuff. I'm like, you think you're entitled to a journalism career apparently yes, clearly. because, because I'm just saying it's, it's tough out there. And there are lots of people that are not white male, whatever, that they're doing the journalism thing on their own. But I think People like Becky need a vehicle like the Mary Sue. And I think the Mary Sue is in very, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I think they're in very real danger of getting shut down. Well, this doesn't help. This does not help. I think this actually makes a case for why gamers group should just take the L and be like, you know what? We're paying people like Becky to spout off like it's 2017 and there's no ad revenue. Nobody's reading this shit. Becky's supposed to be talking about biases in entertainment and somehow makes it about the election, <laughs> yeah, abortion. Right. This Journalism is, and AI. What the fuck? Like that, none of this stuff has anything to do. I mean, maybe in Becky's head she can draw the strings or whatever, but like if the discussion is solely about whether or not audiences have an implicit bias against um the leads or who's starring the movie or whatever, uh, I would say yes. And if it's more everybody does, everybody does. And if it's more pronounced now, it's because of articles like this and because of critics like Becky telling us that we're awful people if we don't go see a bad movie, an objectively bad movie, or a movie that's maybe not just for us. I'm sorry, as a straight white man uh, going to see a movie, uh, a rom-com about, uh, you know, uh, maybe a black gay man and his boyfriend, it's just not going to interest me. That was like that. Which other, is fine. Just the, like it wouldn't. They, they don't want to see a rom com with a guy and a girl. It's yeah. Fine. What was that one gay rom com? Oh, and he's having a hissy fit about it. I don't. And remember. he was like flipping out. I'm I like, remember what it was called. I forget what it was called, but it was it was um, uh, it, you know, it was a gay rom com. I'm like, well, okay. There's guys don't like rom coms to begin with. Guys don't part. like rom coms. No, begin with. I mean, there's some that do. Um, straight dudes are not gonna be like. Ah, hey, uh, there are hey. some straight guys who like rom coms. No, and girls like that. No, I'm like, saying Ooh, straight yay. guys are not gonna go to the gay rom com. Like, no. hey, dude, let's go. Uh, let's like go do some like uh cardio, and then we'll go like to the the bar and get some. Uh, we'll drink some beers, and then let's go see this gay rom com together. Right. It's like that wasn't what articles say. <laughs> yeah. Straight men cuddle and all this other crap Straight with each other. Like, and I'm like, no, the they fuck don't. They do. I've no, never they don't. cuddled any of my friends. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you felt like I've left you out of anything, uh, friends that listen to this show, but I, I'm not a I'm not much of a hugger to begin with, but I've never cuddled my friends. You'll be happy to know I've never cuddled I'm glad my to friends. Know. Um he doesn't really have much time to cuddle me even. So, you know, don't feel too bad. Um, are we gonna wrap this up though? I think I I think I've decimated Becky pretty well. Becky, you have an awful lot of biases that you Becky's might need to, to to do that worksheet for. Oh my god! Um, to overcome. Part of wait, Becky's a he. She he. No, it says in twenty twenty three he was part of the panel X. Wait, I don't understand. I don't understand. I okay. Now I'm really conf I Becky, I'm sorry. I'm really confused by your pronouns. She and he. So I can just call Becky whatever I want. I think they're to? doing it deliberately saying he and sometimes it's she and others. I don't really I, I just call Becky. Whatever. Stupid. I don't care. What the fuck are you talking about? Becky just has a lot of cats. Oh, color me surprised. Um Comics beat. Oh my god. She was part of a a, a thing that got, got an Eisner Award. Well, so were you. I don't. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, people don't realize that. Like, uh, the majority of mainstream comics work that I've done, I've been part of teams that won Eisner's. Did I get my own Eisner? No. Do I care? Not really. But I have worked, I, I can honestly say, I can honestly say I've worked almost exclusively on Eisner nominated and Eisner winning projects. Because you're a male. No, it's because I, I just did my job and the books were good and somehow they got awards. 
Nah, uh you, you get it, it, it automatically is good even if you change everything and make it not good. I don't it's give a it's shit. good because if it, you have to say it's good if it's diversity led because if you don't say it's good then you're a uh, poopy pants bigot. I don't give a fuck about the eyes. Him says so. I don't give a fuck. I don't give fucks. Can we wrap this up? I'm I'm out of fucks to get. Anyway, I'm this. sorry it was long. I did warn you. I feel like this is a this is an article that belongs on Comics Alliance circa 2014, 2015. And that that era is over. And I'm sorry, Becky, the world has has moved on and people just support what they like and they don't support what they don't like and you can't guilt or shame people into supporting love, things they don't like. It's like across Becky's write up is about LGBTQ this and he him and she her and all the other crap whatever. And then they about going about like you're you're biased against white cis male you're you're white cis male bias, and I'm like um, I think you're the one with a, a, a white cis male critical bias, personally Becky. Um, I hope you get over that. There's help. Um, I don't. You, know. I, hope I think it. I think Becky has worked in enough of these rags to know when they're going to get shut down. And I think the Mary Sue is going to get shut down pretty soon. I can feel it. It feels like it's end stage Mary Sue. Is, is <laughs> That's just... saying something. Okay, are we wrapping it up? Yeah, let's wrap this up. We'll talk uh, to you later. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.